Hey everybody, uh, today we want to look at uh, a very interesting uh, attribute of God, and this is the attribute of God's jealousy. God's jealousy. And so I think uh, in our world, when we think of the word jealous or envious, I think this is a word that we really view negatively. I think universally we use the word jealousy or envy as a character flaw that arises from an insecurity or a, a sense of um, not being able to possess something that we desire to hold on to tightly. And it shows an immaturity. Uh, when we think of the word jealousy when it comes to God, I want us to just to, to maybe think this word through that is there ever a time when jealousy is a good thing? Here's a question. Is jealousy wrong if you have ultimate and exclusive right to the object? I think sometimes uh, Christians, um, because we've been influenced by our world, we sometimes handcuff God by using some of his attributes and using them in an exclusive way that, that, that broadly um, creates this exclusivity in other attributes of God. And so the love of God, sometimes I think when we say that God is love, we use that as a catch-all phrase that God is exclusively love. And so it's almost like God is love. Uh, and unequivocally, we can also say that love is God. And so that God is love, and there's nothing other than love inside of him on our terms. I want to give you a couple examples of how we do this in our world. Uh, the first one is in 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, well, well, first we'll start in 1 John. It says in 1 John 4, 16, God is love, and whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. Right? So, so this idea that God is love is scriptural. It comes from 1 John 4. And so I've seen, I've seen this, this exact thought process go on in somebody's mind. They say God is love. And so what God is, is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And so in 1 Corinthians 13, this is, says love is, and the people say because God is univ univocally love and God is love and God are equal terms. God is love. Love is God. We can take the word love is patient out and just put God in there. God is patient. God is kind. He does not envy. He does not boast. He is not proud. He is not rude. He is not self-seeking. He is not easily angered. He keeps no records of wrongs. He does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. He always protects, always trusts, always hopes. He always perseveres. God never fails. Now, I, I don't know if this is exactly um, the way we should be using this, because God sometimes, um, in his wisdom and, and in his relation to us, doesn't act always in accordance with this because there's other things going on. And so a couple examples, it says God doesn't keep any record of wrongs. And the Bible says he actually does. Uh, when we are in Christ, he will not punish us for those records. And as far as the east is from the west, he has, as far, far he's removed our transgressions from us. But it also says in Revelation that he keeps a record of, of all the things we've ever done. And so that's something we have to, to, something we have to struggle with. Different people think different things. But this idea specifically, love does not envy, and so therefore God doesn't envy as well, is a handcuffing of God. Uh, typically, jealousy or envy, if it's jealous, it, it shows an immaturity or an insecurity, but not always. Here's something I want to ask. I want to ask this question I want us to think about. If I'm jealous over someone else's wife, I, I see someone else's wife that I desire and I'm jealous of the love that she shares with him, that is evil. I think, I think universally, hopefully in our world, we think that that's universally evil, that she belongs to him and he belongs to her. So don't get involved there, Steve. But I, I think, um, do we ever think about this, that I should be jealous over my own marriage? That it would actually be wrong for me to be passive if, 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 if someone was starting to court Kelsey, my wife, if I didn't step in, if I didn't have a spirit inside of me of jealousy, that someone was stepping into something that didn't belong to them, and I was jealous 
for the love that God had put in Kelsey and my heart for each other, that would actually be wrong. Do you believe that? Jesus says, what God has brought together, let no man separate. And there needs to be a jealousy there. This is a good example of good jealousy. I could still sin in my desire, in my jealousy for Kelsey. I could, I could, I could act out in a sinful way. I'm not saying that, that, that everything's on the table there, but this is a good desire. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, this is, listen to how Paul talks about Jesus and the church, the groom and the bride. I will hope you will put up with my foolishness, but I can see that you're already doing that. I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy. Look at that, godly jealousy. The adjective, godly jealousy. There's a type of jealousy which is good. I promised you to one husband, to Christ, so that I may present you as a pure virgin to him. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds have somehow been led astray from your sincere and your pure devotion to Christ. These are marital terms. The Bible is clear that Jesus is our groom and we are his bride. There's this holy jealousy God has, which is completely acceptable. It would actually be wrong if he didn't possess it for us. And so in the in the in the Old Testament, the word kana is this this word, this Jewish word for jealousy, and it's to be desirous of, to be zealous about, to be excited in, in anger over, to execute judgment because of. And we see that God expresses his jealousy through anger, fury, and wrath. God doesn't just get grieved. In the New Testament, he gets grieved. In the Old Testament, he gets very much grieved in his jealousy. Uh, the book of Hosea, it shows his jealousy, but it shows specifically his anger, his fury, and his wrath taken out on images, on idols, on other gods, on sin itself. He's punishing his fury, his anger, and his wrath. Are, this, is a, this is a protective jealousy, and he, and he punishes things that get in the way of his bride and him. And so here's a couple examples. Uh, in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy 29, verse 20, here we see the wrath and the fury of God. 29, verse 20. The Lord will never be willing to forgive him. His wrath and his zeal will burn against that man. And all the curses written in the book will fall upon him and the Lord will blot his name out from under the heaven. This is talking about people, the blessing and the curses and people who consistently refuse and walk away from God and they, they, they're, they're, they're stirring up the people of God and they're creating this idolatry. Here's a, here's a couple more. The, the fury of God. We see this in Zechariah. Sorry, I'm trying to find it in my Bible here. Zechariah is one of those books that that disappears when you're looking for it. It's, it's not like Isaiah that takes up 40 or 50 pages. It's only a couple, so it hides on us. Uh, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 2. It says, This is what the Lord Almighty says. I am jealous for Zion. I am burning with jealousy for her. And so God, in his jealousy, is going to bring Israel back. He's going to rescue her. He's got this... This zealousness. Isaiah 42, verse 13. Isaiah 42, verse 13. We see this, the wrath of God. The Lord will march out like a mighty warrior. Like a warrior, he will stir up his zeal. With a shout, he will raise the battle cry, and he will triumph over his enemies. And there's this zealousness for Israel. And he wants to take out the images. He wants to take out the idols the other gods, and the sin in our world. He, he wants to remove those things in a protective jealousy over his people. And so in the, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, well, we see it developing in the Old Testament. The New Testament presupposes it and builds upon this, but that God is, 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 uh, the, desires to protect five things. And his jealousy is a protective jealousy over five different areas. The first one is his own unique nature, who God is and his specific 
characteristics that only he has. God is jealous that other that we will not um, say those things about other gods. That we know that he is only like that. His name and his reputation, how he's acted in history. God is jealous that we would understand he is the redeemer. He is the rescuer. He is the one who is the peacemaker. He is the one who is the flourisher, the one that gives life. It's not these other gods. It's not these other nations. It's, it's just him. Uh, God is jealous in protecting his own unique people. These are a people that he is jealous for. I, I've created these people for my glory. These people I love. I've chosen Abraham. I've chosen Isaac and Jacob, and they belong to me. I, I've chosen Israel. I love them, and I'm jealous for them that I am their God. Like the Shema says, um, there is the Lord your God, the Lord your God is one. Worship the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your strength. There's only there's, there's this unique back and forth love between God and his people. God has this desire um, to protect, and this is jealousy for the land of Israel and for the unique city, which is Jerusalem. God has this jealousy the Old Testament talks about. And I want us to just really think about this, that God has this special type of jealousy, and it's a jealousy for us. It's not a jealousy of us, or not a jealousy of Baal, or um, of these other gods of Egypt. He's not je- God's not jealous over our idol of money. He's not jealous over our idol of sex. He's not jealous over our idol of luxury and recreation. He's jealous over for us. There's a huge difference there. Jealousy for his people is a protective, a loving type of jealousy. It's not a petty envy that we're putting our love on something else and it creates a hole in God's heart because he needs our love. That's jealousy of. But Jesus um, and his father have jealousy for us. They have jealousy for for us, that we would be restored and we would be reconnected to him. And so God is jealous for himself and for us. Okay? God is jealous for himself that he would be honored exclusively. And in turn, we would be blessed in this exclusive source of all blessing. Right? And so, so God is jealous that his name would be protected and honored, that God has to honor himself because he's the highest thing, and God searches and desires the highest things, but also that, that he's jealous for us, that we would experience him, not other things. He's jealous for our safety. He's jealous for our flourishing. He's jealous for our joy. He's jealous for our comfort. God is jealous that we would be living and breathing and eating and drinking him. You see how different that is than the the petty jealousies that are in our world. And so here's a a good example. God has so many of these in the the prophets. We've seen the prophets. Hosea is the, the prototypical version of this. God is, it's like God has been cheated on and, and um, God's wife or his girlfriend is now running away with other people and God's wooing and calling his people back to him and he's advertising his glory and his beauty and he's saying, you will be satisfied in me. Stop running around with the other dudes. Come back to me and I will, I will satisfy you. I will give you what your heart desires. I'm saying these things for your sake because you need them. In Jeremiah chapter 2, listen to this. My people have committed two sins. Jeremiah 2 verse 13. They've committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns which cannot hold water. And he goes on and he says, your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Then you, and consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me. And so he's saying all of these things, no matter how much you wash yourself in soap and, and the, as much as you cleanse yourself, and as much as you energize yourself with your idols, you will not experience the life 
the beauty, the power, the flourishing, the wisdom, the security, the comfort, the joy, and the love unless you come back to me. And so I'm jealous for you, Israel. I'm jealous for you, church, that you wouldn't share your love with things that destroy you. I want us to think about these things. As Christmas is around the corner, think about the jealousy that God has for you. Think about that. I want to end in James 4. It says, You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who's a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. And then it says, listen to this, John, James 4, verse 5. It says, do you not, um, how does it say it? Do you not believe that scripture says without reason, the spirit he caused to live inside of us envies intensely. Now the Holy Spirit is a grieving jealous God who desires for us to love Jesus Christ, the giver of all life. Jesus, through his spirit, is jealous for us. Hear his call when he speaks to you that there's this, this jealousy inside of him that he longs to bring you back, that your focus would be on Christ and that he would melt and soften and shape your heart. Don't run away from him. He is the one who is jealous for you with a jealous lover love.